we all shit ourselves. <laughs> but then I came over the net saying that it was the pre seen ID um, and they've just detonated it. So thanks for telling us, because we all just shit ourselves. <laughs> Whew. Hey, do you know, that was a big explosion. Like, can you imagine if one of the trucks had gone over that? We've update, we're about six, seven k's away from Edinburgh. And we've, we've done about two, three k's in the last four hours. So the bodies, the IEDs are found. So everybody's getting really tired now. Uh, all we want to do is take the body around me off and have a rest. Now three hours behind schedule. It's a race against time for the road warriors to reach Edinburgh before dark. We've been quite busy today. This route's just proven that it's still, um, still pretty high risk. We can't be sure that they haven't laid any more, so we just take it nice and slow, make sure that the, the guys are following each other's tracks uh, and get them up through the other side as safe as possible. We've got about 7Ks from Edinburgh. The dangers are playing on Lisa's mind. She's worried for her fiancé, Carl, who's on the same mission. It's not as if I can protect him or anything, but I'd like to know where he is and what he's up to. That's what people don't understand, because they all think, yeah, it's brilliant because we see each other every day. But they have not got the slightest clue what it's like to be out on the ground together, having to worry about each other. Soldiers are exhausted. At times like these, their thoughts turn to their families. I don't have a wife, I don't have a kids. Um, because all I do is worry. My baby boy, he's only two. You know, he doesn't know me. Listen. He won't, he won't recognise me when I get back. Which is hard. But it's just it's one of those things that obviously he's not seen me for the last five months, has he? Love it. I just feel dirty. <laughs> I just want to have a wash. I've been awake for 25 hours now. I'm hungry. And I just really want to get back, to, well, I just want to get to Edinburgh safe so we can all unwind. Um, I found another one. Are they detonating that? Uh, I'm not sure. Where is it? Apparently the Omni team were talking to a little chuggy kid and the kid said that the Taliban's still here and they're just a bit further up the back. <gasps> See as they came in and start laying more to IEDs. Oh my God. Well, careful when you get down there to fuck in. Alright. Alright. Cheers. Right, I'm going to Quarters eight and they happen to found another IED. There's been a barmaling set up for us down this hill. Using specialist metal detectors, the soldiers secure a safe lane around the IED. Their second find in almost three hours. Although they're only six miles from Fob Edinburgh, it's still a long way to go. Can you hear me? The explosion was just yards in front of Lisa's truck. Have you said stop, stop, stop? I did. Mate, just quickly see if that fucking radio's on, because I've lost, I've lost comms. That's what that fucking bang was over there. Look. Just pass me the radio, please. Thank you. Uh, room two for Alpha. There was a there was a bang there, and no vehicles um, involved in any incident back there. Over. At the front of the convoy, Major McIntyre is unclear about what's happened. That sounded like an IED, that. Right. Just one bank. Hello, stations, this is Roman 3 for Alpha. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, is that? You alright? Yeah. Which wagon is it? It's this one over here. It's another 28. Put your lights on. Put the lights on. Put my lights on. I'm just looking to see if there's any compounds with my NVDs, just in case there's like a follow up. 
Uh, room 3 for Alpha, we've heard nothing uh, yet. Um, still waiting to hear. Over. Yeah, there's been an explosion on it. That is about 400 meters to the rear of the CLT or the before the body. I'm not joking. Uh, Roman 3 for Alpha, uh, Roger G, hello, 3 for Charlie. This is 3 for Alpha. Yeah, it appears to be some sort of IDF or something uh, to the rear of the patrol. I just drove past Cal. He's going to be pulling his air out now because I've just passed him. Um, can you relay to uh, titanium call sign? Uh, we just need some further assistance. We've had an IED strike on uh, Delta 28. Delta 28. This is fine. This is fine. I'm informed there. Uh, there are casualties. They're all OK. We'll Fuck be shaking no. up. I'm going to bomb away. I'm going to serve you. I'll just check anyway. Over. Yeah, I can't, I can't emphasise it enough that there's no casualties. You know, hitting an IED and not having any injuries is uh, is quite an unusual occurrence. So we're, we're very lucky and we'll, we'll wait and see, make sure that these boys are alright because no doubt they'll be shook up. Lisa's fiancé Carl reaches her to see if she's okay. The shock of what's happened hits home. Okay. I've been worrying about you. Don't worry about me, babe. Okay. All right. You're not going in front of us, are you? No, the mastiff's going, leading us out. But I want you to go behind me. Babe, don't worry. No, I can't fucking cope watching you, babe. All right. All right, they're safe now. That could have been fucking us, like. Yeah, I can't outside, fucking cope. I can't cope. Worried about you all the time. And I can't have you driving hey, in front I of me. It was you. Right, we're going. Alright, we have to go, alright? Don't worry, okay? I just got like visions um, of him being in front of me and him going over to mine, like. As we're away so far, uh, it's blown one of the wheels off uh, and the, the wheel station. So we've got a mechanic and a recovery uh, vehicle going back to check it out. We've got the ugly call sign in the air. He's providing overwatch because these little bastards might come out now and just uh, think it's all Christmas is at once. Start fucking throwing whatever else they've got at us. We're going forward now to the ID uh, vehicle to recover that. There is no casualties. Uh, everybody seems to be fine. However, I've got the medics looking at uh, uh, the passengers. Uh, we're going to make an assessment of us so far. Over. We're going to assess the 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 we stood six feet away from a, an IED strike, which could have killed two two British soldiers, and we stood six feet away from it, and not knowing what's around us. And that's what worries me about this fucking godforsaken country. Just step out your truck and up you go. I think you're quite lucky, you guys. Very lucky. Very lucky. The medics treat the soldiers who were in the vehicle that drove over the IED. They could have lost a limb or their lives. But this time, the truck took the full impact of the blast. So this is the third IED. Um, we've had two fines and one strike in the matter of 5K, no, 4Ks. The thing that the Taliban will probably never get into their heads is the British Army don't give up. It doesn't matter how many IEDs they plant, how many times they attack us, we'll keep going until we get where we need to go. Scary, isn't it? With the stricken vehicle now on tow, the road warriors are finally on the home straight. Right, let's go and let's pull up on the left hand side and get into Eddie. Yeah, they've done a good job, they? you know, they impress me every time. 
to go out and we expect him to drive for ridiculous amounts of time with very little rest. And they've done it again, so fair play and well done. And at last they arrive at forward operating base Edinburgh. Well, here we are, uh, some 22 hours later. Um, slightly longer than what I anticipated, but uh, had quite a few incidents en route. Um, principally being that, that we always understood was the IED threat uh, was our principal enemy um, on this particular operation. Um, really, for the last 15 kilometers, we were pretty much hounded by them, but uh, we're all here safely. Um, no one's hurt, um, but a lot of tired eyes and a lot of tired heads. As they prepare to bed down for the night, they all know they face the same gruelling journey to get home. But next time they might not be so lucky. Almost 24 hours ago we left Bastion, shattered, actually drained, uh, physically drained, mentally drained. Uh, just need some sleep and something to eat, really. Coming up... There's uh, a local national walking through the water system with a wheelbarrow. Hey, bang one up, mate. He's getting closer and closer. With one of the most punishing convoys to date, the road warriors finally arrived at forward operating base Edinburgh to deliver essential supplies. But after three IED fines and one strike which nearly killed two soldiers, the return journey to Camp Bastion was deemed too dangerous. They were delayed for 24 hours while reinforcements arrived to assist them through the most hazardous areas. The massive group that have gone in to clear and secure the area have found their first IED already. They've only been out there fucking 15 minutes. The soldiers are keen to leave, and with the IED diffused, it's time to face the gruelling return journey. Just get going! Come on, let's get him going! Well, it's 7 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, about to embark on the, the journey back to Bastion, 80 k's. I, I always feel ap apprehensive. Um, I think if you're not apprehensive, um, then there's something wrong, because obviously out there, is, is, is a real enemy, it's a real war, there's real dangers. And if you're not apprehensive, then I, I don't think you're doing your job properly. Their close call with an IED on the way to Fob Edinburgh is playing on Lisa's mind. Well, I was dreading leaving um, Eddie. I was really like quite worried about it. But now I'm on the move, I'm all right. Uh, we're just probably about um, 8 to 10 k's uh, southwest of uh, from Edinburgh. Making reasonable progress, uh, but dust conditions are pretty atrocious. Can you even fucking see me? Oh, I, I fucking love it. See if my missus ever fucking moans about dust on top of the telly again. <laughs> the most important thing now is, is that the vehicles stay within that safe lane. If any guys are confused or get uh, disorientated by the dust, they need to stop and make sure that they refine the route before they transit through it. So it's going to take a little bit more time than normal, but that's the price you pay for safety. When you can't see the truck in front, it is scary because you get that thing through your head where you think you're on your own. Uh, Roman 3 for Alpha, Roger, I just want you to pass up to all uh, Delta call signs, they must stay in the tracks. Delta 8, for some reason, keeps straying out of the tracks. If he does it again, uh, me and him have got to fall out. Over. We cannot have these drivers straying out of the, the, the clear track. I don't care how bumpy it is, I don't care how uncomfortable it is, they follow exactly the tracks that we cut for them. It's a fucking drops vehicle, not a Superman suit. The road warriors have now had four IED fines and one strike on this mission. One slight move off the tracks and they could find another. I've got... I've got the butterflies already, like... Here we go, it started. I can't see a bloody thing. Yeah, it's down these tracks here. They're in a high-threat area, and the Taliban have had three days to prepare for the convoy's return journey. Suddenly, something catches Shotty's eye. 
What's that guy there? Is he walking through? Yeah, he's got a wheelbarrow. Is he stopping or does he keep going? Yeah, he's pushing something. There's uh, well, a local well, national well, walking through one system with a wheelbarrow yeah. heading towards a convoy. They took out the wrong range of a wheelbarrow. <laughs> This is a very real threat. Earlier in the year, British Marines were killed by a suicide bomber with explosives in a wheelbarrow. We've got force protection now looking at him. The local nationals know to keep the distance uh, and, and they'll be safe. If we start walking towards the convoy, it could be anything. We have to take it as a, a threat. So we fire many flares at them, uh, not at them, but you know, in their direction. If they stop, no dramas. If they keep coming, then that's an even bigger threat. And then uh, young peers up the shop will put some um, some rounds down as a warning shot. Mate, bang one up, mate. He's getting closer and closer. He's walked all along that body system there and stopped right there. What's he say? Hello, yeah, he's sat down now. So he's left his wheelbarrow now and walked away. The wheelbarrow is dangerously close to the convoy. There is no way of knowing whether it's harmless or a deadly Taliban bomb. All call signs, this is Roman 3 4 Alpha. Be aware that if anybody approaches the vehicles, keep them at length by using the escalation measures as previously instructed. This time, it was a false alarm. Ensure that now all your top covers are using SUSATs to scan their arcs. Over. What we need to do now is make sure that the top covers, as well as having their, their machine guns, need to have their, their personal weapons because you've got a four times magnification on the site so they can scan the area a bit better. Larry is right to be cautious. Just in front of the convoy is another hidden roadside bomb. The Master Group have found another IED in the next wadi. This is the fifth IED the road warriors have encountered. The route has proved to be as deadly as they anticipated. Uh, we're currently static, uh, conducting uh, Og Bomber and uh, IED uh, clearance. Roman 3 4 Alpha out. Now we're static uh, in a bunch of compounds right by the Shingar feature. Um, obviously, the mortar threat is uh, is quite high. Because we've been up there for the last, you know, three days, they've had ample opportunity to lay as many IEDs as they want. You know, they've had plenty of time to dig them in, cover them over, make them nice and camouflaged. So uh, this is why it's so slow going at the moment. With the patrol spread over six miles, they're attracting unwanted attention. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, what's going on over there? Right far in the distance, I've seen a load of flashes, but I don't know whether it was a camera, a reflection, or... Taliban spies operate throughout the region. The messages they pass on could be fatal to the British troops. Uh, Roman 3 for Alpha, did you get it from Amber uh, 6 zero that uh, uh, what appeared to be uh, signalling by a mirror uh, and uh, packs moving about on motorcycles over? This information could give the Taliban an accurate target. One of hotel call signs spotted uh, suspicious local nationals in a motorbike and a mobile phone. They've gone behind a compound. They've moved to another compound now. They're popping their heads up and down as if they're watching us. They've got a game of cat and mouse, aren't they, little fuckers? They've stopped at the moment. Hang on, they're moving again. I saw a final warning shot, uh, they've now stopped, one of them's got off the bike and sat down. The uh, local nationals again are just testing us, Piers fired uh, mini flares at them, they kept coming, it's warning shot, basically to fuck off, get away from the convoy. Every top cover has got that authority to do it, especially where we are now and, you know, if need be, um, shoot them if need be. With all this enemy activity, Major McIntyre takes no chances and requests air cover. How long we got in for, sir? Uh, two hours. Lovely jubbly. Fucking lovely jubbly. 
Because the terrorists this fucking shit scared of that bad boy out there. When he's up and about, we don't normally get too much incidents or anything else. Because he, you know, he can ping them from so far away. Just imagine him sat in there in his fucking air-conditioned cockpit, sucking up fucking pims as he's flying over the top of us. Hello, chaps! And it's not just the Apache which keeps Lisa's spirits high. And it was crazy, but Cal, um, and just knowing that when I finish this tour, I'm going home to get married, and that's, that's what keeps me going. But obviously the lads as well, lads and lasses, knowing that we're all doing it together helps. It's good to sit down sometimes and have a laugh about what happened, you know, how close we all were to death or being blown up and that. It's all right to laugh then, but at the time, it's not fucking funny. After a relentless four-day patrol through one of the toughest deserts in the world, the road warriors finally make it back to Camp Bastion. Long journey. A lot of uh, IED finds on the way. Better to find them with the IED team than to find them with any of the trucks. Uh, and apparently it was a bit dusty, but I've not looked at them so I couldn't tell you. They've covered 100 miles, delivered 135 tonnes of supplies and found five roadside bombs, one of which nearly killed two British soldiers. But he sorted himself to, 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 to exceptionally well. Uh, again, just the resilience and the professionalism of them is, is, is outstanding. And that's probably some of the most severe driving conditions that we've been in. Uh, but all in all, a successful op. Uh, but I've just, just recently heard it's been a pretty bad day for the task force. There's been quite a few casualties. Uh, so, you know, it's fucking our hearts uh, go out to the families and the friends there. Um, and, you know, they weren't so lucky. But uh, on this day, you know, we've been safely. So it's uh, we turn around again in, in five or six days' time and, and, and back out to support the task force. Next time on Road Warriors. We have a suicide for man. Is it going to be a firefight in there? Gaff, let's go! The suicide bomber's dream, this. And there's more where that came from tomorrow night over on ITV4 with Road Warriors The Extra Mile at 9.